This is an 18 volts peak to peak signal going into an Arduino operating at 5 volts. And the signal isn't reduced in any way using some voltage divider. The Arduino is actually measuring over 18 volts without losing any resolution. So today, we're going to check out the circuit that's making this possible, which only involves a 5 volt supply and some op amps with resistors. Now, why is this a big deal? If you've played around with Arduinos, which again operates at 5 volts, or with any other electronics, you know that electronics hate it when you provide a voltage signal beyond its operating point. And we all know what happens when you accidentally put excessive voltages into electronics. <coughs> Just as a quick preview, here's our setup with the signal generator providing 18 volt signal to a Unity game buffer, which then goes to our special circuit that slices up the 18 volt signal into four separate signals that ranges from 0 to 5 volts. Since the 18 volt signal is sliced into multiple and manageable signals that our Arduino can handle, the entire 18 volt signal is able to be sensed by the Arduino without losing any resolution. The Arduino then sends the digitally summed ADC signal to our computer, which is running MATLAB plotting the data. Also, you can directly connect the 20 volt power supply instead of using the signal generator and change the output voltage to create your own waveform. <laughs> look at that. Whee! I mentioned in the beginning of the video that we're not using a voltage divider for our 18 volt signal, but why not? It's a valid solution to our problem. If you remember voltage dividers from Electronics 101, you know that we can simply reduce the 18 volt signal going into the Arduino by a factor of 4, by a factor of 4, by a factor of 4, with two resistors, to limit the signal voltage below 5 volts, which is something the Arduino can handle. Simple enough. Yes, we can do that easily, but... Then we lose the resolution of the signal when the Arduino changes it from analog signal to digital signal by a factor of 4. Who would have guessed that? Just as a quick review, and to showcase the importance of resolution, we'll take a closer look at the Arduino, which has a 10-bit analog to digital converter, also known as an ADC. Feel free to skip this section about ADCs using the provided timestamps if you already know about ADCs. The ADC takes the incoming voltage signal, ranging from 0 to 5 volts, and converts it into digital values from 0 to 1023, or total of 1024 points since we start counting from the value 0. In other words, 0 volt signal corresponds to an ADC value of 0, and the 5 volt signal corresponds to a value of 1023. But you may be asking, what does 10 bit resolution actually mean? Explaining through example, here is a 4 bit resolution ADC converting the 0 to 5 volts peak to peak analog signal. We see that 4 bit resolution has a total of 2 to the power of 4 ADC points, or an equivalent total of 16 ADC points ranging from 0 to 15. And the step size between each ADC points is approximately 333 millivolts. Now, here's an example of a 2 bit resolution ADC. And here's an example of a 1 bit resolution ADC. We see that as the bit resolution increases, more steps exist, or rather, we have more finer step size and it more closely approximates our original analog signal. Now, with our original 10-bit ADC, we see that the resolution is so high that we can no longer see the extremely fine step size of the digital output signal. Also, with a 10-bit resolution, we see that each ADC step size increment is approximately 5 millivolts. Now, bringing everything back to our 18 volt signal scenario, if we assume no resolution is lost to measure up to 20 volts, Specifically, the smallest incremental voltage that the ADC can sense, which again is approximately 5 millivolts in our case. Then, the 20 volt will correspond to an ADC value of 4095. And, you can see that our 18 volt signal has an ADC value of 3685. Now, going back to our scenario where we use a voltage divider and divide our signal by a factor of 4, we'd reduce the 18 volt signal to 4.5 volts. So, we just went from 3685 to 920 in ADC value when we use the voltage divider, losing almost 2,800 points of ADC, or equivalent of losing 4 times the resolution. That's a lot of resolution lost. <laughs> now that's a lot of damage! To illustrate how important resolution is, here is a 4K video alongside of its 480p version. You see a drastic difference in quality, although one may argue both videos are shit. And here's the same video, but at 144p. Ah! Now obviously, we're not talking about video resolution regarding our circuit, or how terrible Game of Thrones ending was. 
But the point is that higher resolution means more information for you and your system, which is always better in my book. So, how can the Arduino measure the entire 18 volt signal without blowing it up to a crisp? I give you the quantizer. And its objective is to slice the incoming voltages into manageable 5 volt signals. So, for a 20 volt signal, the quantizer will slice it into 4 manageable signals ranging from 0 to 5 volts. The concept behind the quantizer is very simple and is based on two main requirements. To illustrate these requirements, here is our setup where we have an input voltage signal going into the Arduino ADCs. First, it needs to limit the voltage going into the Arduino, which can only accept signals from 0 to 5 volts. If we give it the entire 18 volt signal, then, well, it's goodbye Arduino. So, we place a limiter which limits the incoming signal from 0 to 5 volts, just before the Arduino ADCs. However, we see that the limiter only allows the bottom portion of the input signal to go through. This brings us to our second requirement where we shift the incoming signal with a voltage offset to accept different sections of the 18 volt signal. Once we have these two requirements in place, the quantizer is able to slice up the signals into manageable 5 volt signals for the Arduino, where the ADCs measuring the different parts of the signal are all added together digitally to reconstruct the original 18 volt signal. Just to summarize, the quantizer breaks up a larger problem into smaller, manageable bite-sized problems that the Arduino can handle. Is your mouth tiny and small? Then why don't you come down a little bit? Little bits. Where, where the food is tiny, you can put it in your mouth and eat it. Nothing gets stuck in your lips. It's just tiny and tiny and fits right in. Also, from a high-level perspective, we see that implementing the voltage limiter and voltage offsets to our Arduino changed our original circuit to an equivalent Arduino with a 12-bit ADC that can accept up to 20 volts, instead of the multiple 10-bit ADCs that can only accept up to 5 volts. It's as if like we have a completely new upgraded Arduino. So, theory is nice and all, but how do we actually implement this circuit, specifically the voltage limiter and the voltage offsets? The first part with the voltage limiter is achieved by using a rail-to-rail op-amp supplied with 0 to approximately 5 volts. This way, we know for sure the op-amp can't provide more than 5 volts into our Arduino. The second part with the voltage offsets is achieved by using a differential op-amp configuration with various supply configurations as shown in the figure to set the voltage offset values. I won't bore you with the equations and details, so I'll provide a link for you with everything down in the description. It's my new website that I plan on updating with every new video and will contain all the necessary details regarding the project. Links will also be provided on the quantized analog signal processing concept where I got the idea for this video. Notice how we don't need a 20 volts power supply for the quantizer circuit to measure up to 20 volt signal. This is one of the many huge advantages of the quantizer where we can use the onboard 5 volt supply. But this isn't exactly true, which will be explained very soon. There are a few but important issues that needs to be addressed for the quantizer. First, the rail-to-rail op-amp used in this video is one of the cheapest op-amps you can find. It does not do a great job of keeping the output quote-unquote rail-to-rail or rather from 0 to 5 volts. You piece of shit. To mitigate some of this issue, the supply was increased to 6 volts instead of using 5 volts for the op-amps. Second, the resistors used are rated for a tolerance of plus minus 5%. So they weren't the greatest for these op-amps. If you know a thing or two about differential op-amp configuration, you know that having a large tolerance feedback resistors can really screw up your circuit. My excuse is that I mainly use SMD components instead of through-hole components, so I used what I could scavenge in my ancient lab for this video. Third, the issues mentioned previously caused additional issues with offsets and also attenuated the output signals, which prevented the ADCs from receiving the full 0 to 20 volts. It was closer to approximately 2 to 18 volts, which seemed good enough for this video demonstration. <laughs> Lastly, there are these weird glitches seen with the Arduino ADCs, where it mistakenly thinks it measured zero ADC values. Nani? My guess is that the Arduino might be muxing too fast between the different analog input pins, and we'll need a closer look to resolve the issue. <laughs> Overall, the quantizer circuit turned out okay, and it seemed good enough to demonstrate the quantizer concept, but, there is of course large room for improvements for the next version. Now, with this new circuit as part of your building block catalog, the possibilities are endless! Yes, good, good. With the quantizer, I, Dr. Deadbug, can finally take over the world! <laughs> That's the end of this video. 
If you liked the video, subscribe for more content like this, and please leave a like and comment for our YouTube algorithm overlord. Hit that like button, subscribe, do all the good stuff to feed the algorithm gods. Feed the algorithm gods. I really enjoyed making this video, and I'll be posting more soon on my Tekoyaki channel, involving interesting and practical circuit building blocks like the quantizer, and anything involving robotics and mechatronics. Also, I'll do another video, the quantizer 2.0 where I'll address the issues I've mentioned in this video and also add a feature to measure negative voltages. So stay tuned and see you next time!